Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to today's presentation, Ratings versus Engagement and how to build real loyalty with your audience. My name is Paulina Rodriguez, and I'm the Marketing Delivery Manager of CX uh, here at Question Pro. Uh, first off, uh, we'd like to thank you for taking time out and being here with us. Today, we'll be covering some CX lessons about customer experience, uh, loyalty, engagement, insights about uh, CX in the media industry, and what should be the right measurement to track customers' experience across your audience. Um, but before we start, um, I'd like to go uh, very quickly over a couple of things. Um, we'll be running a live Q&A at the end of the webinar. So please, if you have any questions or comments for the speakers, uh, feel free to pop them in the comment section on the digital channel you're currently watching. And if you miss anything, don't worry. We'll be sending out around the recording uh, once available to everyone who registered. And we'd also like to extend an invitation to participate in these awesome CX uh, Forums Customer Experience Summits, where you can get the opportunity to hear, uh, connect with, and be inspired by customer experience leaders from diverse industries and disciplines. So the next event will be in Boston on May 10th. So whether you'd like to assist or share your CX story as a speaker, be, be sure to register. And we hope to see you there. I'll be sharing the link on our comments um, uh, section. So uh, now I'd like to uh, welcome you on stage, uh, our featured speakers of today. Um, we have Scott Steele, the program director at Morgan Murphy Media and radio host of the Rock 94 and a half at KHTQ uh, FM in Washington. Uh, we have Brady Hall, the general manager of 1310 KFKA Northern Colorado, as well as the host of the whole show. And Ken Peterson, last but not least, our president of CX at Question Pro. And Ken has over two decades of experience in many industries, such as marketing, research, technology, and hospitality. So let me just welcome you guys on stage. And here you go. Hello, guys. Hi. Good morning. Um, <laughs> thank Hello. you very much. Thank you very much, guys, for being here. Uh, good morning. We're looking forward to hearing what you have to share about engaging audiences and winning the rating game in the world of entertainment. Uh, thank you. Again. Thank you. And um, I'll just jump in here. I'll give myself a quick intro um, for those of you that um, have never seen me before. Uh, I'm Ken Peterson, uh, president of Quest Pro CX. I'm, uh, obsessed with all things um, in terms of building uh, technology, consulting, and everything customer experience. But um, today is uh, couldn't couldn't come soon enough for me. Um, just a you know two topics, um, two gentlemen that I use that term loosely. Um, we you should have heard the uh, pregame talk as we were getting ready for this. Um, it, close to me, I mean, hard rock music and Colorado sports, and I mean talk about uh, something uh, that's close to my heart. So first, let me uh, let Scott introduce himself. Well, uh, good morning or afternoon or evening, depending on uh, where you're from. I'm Scott Steele, uh, Program Director of Rock 94.5 KHTQ here in the lovely area of Spokane, Washington. Uh, I have a weird nickname. People call me Buns because of those Buns of Steel workout videos. But fun fact, the guy that invented that video is the same guy that invented the video for Dancing Grannies. So uh, that totally shows you what my future is holding up. Um, I've been in radio for about uh, 27 years. I also do our morning show here on Rock 94 and a half. And uh, I help set up and execute various on-air and online promotions. Also oversee the branding of the radio station. Um, we also uh, have a great organic database that we've uh, started from scratch about uh, 10 years ago. Now we're up to about 15,000 members, always trying to interact with them and develop ways to make uh, the people a part of our brand. You know, we like to say we have the largest uh, morning show and radio show in the country because the way that we interact with people. So that's what I'm all about. All right. Thank you. And Brady, um, and don't be bashful about your most recent uh, uh, accolade, shall I say. <laughs> uh, yeah, we we did. It was a pretty big year. We we did uh, had the opportunity to go down to Denver. We won the uh, best talk show, best sports talk show in a major uh, major market. So we got to go down. We won it two years ago, but because of COVID, um, we weren't able to celebrate. So nobody knew about it. So it was kind of cool to win it this year. And uh, it was fun. Um, but yeah, we're based out of Greeley, Colorado. We service kind of Fort Collins, Loveland, Greeley. 
Uh, we dabble into the Denver market a little bit too, but uh, I've been in radio for about 14 years. I started at the same station that I'm that I'm with now as an intern. Um, a board op, the board terrified me. I hung up on so many callers, just so many people that could have won prizes, but I managed to hang up on them somehow. Uh, and then I kind of just worked up the ranks. I did sales, I did production, uh, became the programming director, sales manager, and then took over as the general manager. So I did things kind of in a weird way. Um, I Once I became general manager, we didn't have a local sports talk show. We weren't really talking sports like I thought the area really needed. There wasn't a sports station at all up here. Um, so I, I built a sports program. We are the voice of the UNC Bears up here in Greeley. We do uh, CSU talk, Broncos nuggets, and preps too. So we really decided about seven, eight, ten years ago maybe that we were really going to push the sports side of things. And uh, it's it's been big for us. And so we created the show called The Whole Show. My wife came up with the name, my last name, Hole. Have a lot of fun with that. And uh, we call our listeners the Holigans. So we've had a lot of fun growing uh, growing that brand for the last few years. And I love it, man. I love every aspect of the radio side of things. It can be challenging, but what I've learned in the last couple of years, as I'm sure we'll get into, is you got to get creative. You have to get very creative in, in the the content that you're putting out there and everything. So uh, it's been a fun ride, and I'm looking forward to uh, looking forward to this today. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, thank you. And I, I do want to note that the last time you and I also did a conversation like this, you also won the major broadcast award. That was that year. So I think we have to do it more consistently. So you win it every year. I'm, I'm kind of starting to think there's a connection there. I think we need to. Do, so let's book one of these next year, too, because I'd like to go for two in a row. That would be pretty sweet. Exactly. <laughs> exactly what we have to do. So I'll, I'll, I'll kick this off. I mean, you know, some of, you know, we're, we're going to talk about ratings versus engagement and uh, we had a great, you know, sort of pre conversations and uh, shared some information with you. And we talked about ratings and the insights that uh, we were even talking about ahead of this uh, hope to capture some of that in this time, but um, you know, just to start off, when we talk about ratings, you know, some of us um, in our audience, um, uh, based on the poll that we ran, probably about half don't even know what ratings are or don't even understand them. Um, so we'll make this concrete and, um, you know, bring it back to the roles that you two play. And, you know, tell me what are ratings and why they're important to you. So uh, I'm going to start with Brady and then uh, I'll jump over to Scott and let him give his explanation. Yeah, and this is a fascinating one, and I'm sure Scott will have kind of a different um, a different experience than we do. So we, us being, we're a locally owned and operated station, and, you know, gosh, was it in 2010 Arbitron, 2008 Arbitron? So we were able to see those ratings, and, you know, we were told our CUME listenership. And, you know, when I'm breaking into the business, I had no idea what some of that stuff meant. And then when it switched over to Nielsen ratings, it became more of a fee. If you wanted to see that book, if you wanted to see those ratings, you had to pay a certain fee. And for us, I don't know what it's like nationwide, but I know for us, for our station, it was around $25,000 just to see the to see the book, to see what your ratings were. And us as a sales team, we really sell on, which I think it's going to be fun to talk about, engagement. We sell on client retention, interaction, um, what our hosts are doing in the community, you know, their kind of their social media engagement, their their own popularity side of it. So when what I later learned as, you know, I started trying to pick the Colorado Broadcasters Association brain a little more. We're the county that we're in is Weld County and the diaries they send out these one sheets that we're going to talk about um, less than 2%. I was told two years ago, uh, less than 2% of people in Weld County received these diaries. Um, so I, my brain is going, I wonder how many people actually fill those out. They're just kind of a, a what a piece of paper, a trifold type of paper. I've seen it. I've never had one delivered to me before, but I've seen one. And you're literally going down, marking off what you listen to, what you do, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and I, it's a funny story real quickly. I actually had a guy by the station one day when the diaries came out. He's standing by our station and he said, I just received the diary. And I wrote down that I listened to this country music station, but I listen to you guys every day. Huh? Didn't even think to write it down. So I'm thinking, wow, that's in a, in a small sense, that's somehow in a, in a way that we're we're gaining our, our audience or learning about our, our rating system. So um, it's a very unique system. I'm not saying it's all the way flawed. It's, it can be very beneficial for some. But for us, we just haven't found to, you know, using those numbers necessarily um, for us is, is 
one of the things that we go to the bread and butter, but I know a lot of stations do, and it's neither good nor bad, but for us, that's kind of our experience as far as what <laughs> ratings are. And I guess sometimes ratings to us, we almost just like, they're like numbers pulled out of thin air for us at some point. So that's kind of our experience we've seen. And how about for you, Scott? I mean, I know um, you have that same challenge of having to deal with both ratings and engagement. Yeah. The, um, the ratings, you know, they work for us, but it's almost like, uh, you know, kind of like a trophy and an and award show. What does it really signify? Uh, uh, what was the significance of it? It's a, an award. Um, in this case, you know, the ratings for us, it helps us sell advertising with our national and regional people. Um, it is definitely a, a great tool, but there can definitely be some improvements in it. Um, in a market like ours being uh, almost a top hundred market, you know, it's still a challenge. And uh, yeah, it's definitely a piece of paper that is filled out. Um, I remember uh, the ratings back in the day, you know, 10, 15 years ago, it was much more precise. You know, what was the name of the person you were listening to? What time was that going on? What was the name of the radio station? Now with them trying to simplify that, it's just what time were you listening to the radio and, and which one, you know, um, we've gotten some of the responses back in the past and, you know, um, the one that really stands out to me, uh, about six, seven years ago, we had a ratings book come back from a gentleman said that he was 75, 76 years old and he's been deaf for 15 years yet. He still listens to the radio station. No, he actually wrote down the morning show he used to listen to 15 years ago because that was the last time he heard him. Literally last time he heard him. But he still fills that out just to get, um, you know, those couple two, three dollars from uh, from the company. So uh, it's definitely a challenge. And, you know, we always try to do what, you know, what we can to better increase those ratings. But on the other side, we do also have our local staff that sells outside the ratings. They, uh, you know, sell promotions, they sell the station, they sell the DJ, live endorsements. So they do a really great job at that. You're, you're trying to find a balance between the two and to maximize those dollars as best as you can. Yeah, and I, I, I'll just go along with the same lines. I, you know, I've, I've received the booklet a couple of times. I appreciate the fact that they up the initial value from $2 to $5. That's all I'm going to say, you know. <laughs> Big money. <laughs> <laughs> Big money. Yeah. And, and you're right. It's, you know, if you've seen it, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely, um, definitely ripe for error, shall we say, um, as you said, in your case, Brady, where, you know, uh, how, how often do we sit down and like literally think of recording what we're doing throughout the day? And, you know, of course, you know, you may have missed that you were in an office building for an hour waiting for your doctor and they're playing some background music, things like that, that, I would never think to include. But so. do really people? But do, but do people really figure that out? Do they really stay that focused on it? Saying, I, "Hey, I went to a, you know, I listened to a rock station." Yet, if I go to a doctor's building, am I going to write down that I heard, you know, a soft jazz station in the background? Oh, I'll right. remember that I heard it because you know, usually, <laughs> you know, only old. if it was a jazz version of Metallica's <laughs> Master of Puppets. Yeah, exactly, yeah. something like that. I so. think that's a great point too, because I mean, a lot of us, you know we're all rockers and sports guys, but there's times you go through different stations to hear what's going on. Maybe you're in a different kind of musical mode. Maybe you're in the news mode. You want to see what's why, why the interstate is backed up or something like that. You do jump around and that's sometimes those diaries don't necessarily account for that. The, the people that are jumping around from station to station or listening, obviously we have so many different ways we can listen to pretty much any and everything today too. So um, that's where I do think it is, it is a somewhat of a flawed system in that sense, because we do have so many options that not, not all the time does it account for write down the 20 things that you listen to from Monday to Friday. So it is interesting. Yeah. But sometimes if you get really lucky, it's like winning the Powerball to where <laughs> if that, if that ratings diary has gone to a hyper P one type of, you know, radio listener that just eat, breathes and dies your radio station, your golden grams, right? You know, uh, the old adage, uh, what was it? Uh, 20% of your audience brings in 80% of your ratings. And mm -hmm. that's why you got to do what you got to do to get the people to wave your flag for you, to wave your brand. No doubt. And that's the big challenge uh, nowadays is making that happen with all the different uh, media uh, uh, aspects, whether it's an app, whether it's online listening, 
uh, getting yourself out there on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, it's only a matter of time before we have OnlyFans pages. Who knows? Yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll see on on how, you know, the future holds for, you know, this type of way to measure your audience. And and, and we told Scott he could promote his OnlyFans page here. So. <laughs> Get it done. Put my fingers in my eyes. <laughs> well, thinking of the next, I mean, when, when we're talking about ratings and getting engagement, I mean, this this should be interesting and fun. Um just, you know, what is the most extreme thing that maybe you've done or you've seen someone else do to get that ratings or get that listenership up? Um, Scott, we'll start with you on this one. Um, you know, uh, it, this day and age, it's a little tougher to do. Um, and Brady can even probably back me up on this. Um, you know, when it came to the old school radio, if um, if you ever seen the movie Anchorman, that's what radio was truly like. It was battling left and right. You were battling, you know, 10, 15 other stations in town. Nowadays, you're only battling three groups, but you have to tone it way down because of human resources and also with uh, the perception. Um, you know, our, our station back before I joined up, uh, you know, they've done some very interesting things. Uh, one way to help get ratings was... It wasn't really a way to get ratings. It was really so much to support the listeners out there to hopefully if they got another book. Uh, back in the day, my boss set something up to go play soccer with Def Leppard. And uh, this was 84, 85. So Def Leppard came to town and uh, we put together a listener uh, set soccer team to where Def, Le Def Leppard could play our listeners. Well, what our program director did um, we had a local, you know, junior major soccer team and he had them play Def Leppard, but told them it was all listeners. So they're coming in and they're doing like butterfly kicks and just kicking, you know, the crap out of Def Leppard. And they're like, geez, mate, <laughs> this is, these, these aren't no listeners. And so <laughs> that was, you know, just a, a way to, you know, play off about that. But uh, me personally, um, like early on in my career, we did, uh, I was out at a country station. I was just getting my foot in the door from a market about two hours south of here. And they had this thing called the listener appreciation concert. Well, they gave away every single ticket in the 5,000 person venue. And these were just some up and coming, you know, country acts, which are now superstars, uh, Toby Keith, uh, Rascal Flats, and it was all for free. Well, what the listener had to do is they had to, go to the sponsor location when they announced it. And then they had 50 free tickets to give away one pair of, you know, one pair of tickets per person. Well, when Toby Keith came to town, he was like, you know, he just blew up at the time. And so everybody lost their mind. So what we decided to do with the help of the program director, I got in the station vehicle and I started driving an hour North and, uh, he calls me on the car phone of all things, put me straight up live on the air, asked me where I was at. No, I'm over here in Prosser, Washington. Hey, how many tickets do you have? None. And then at that same moment, he went to line two where one of his other DJs was on the air and they were at, I think, uh, JC Penny sitting there waiting for people. And then I tell you what, I've never seen so many middle fingers in my lives. You know, I could have been a, you know, Cleveland guardian at a Yankee game and I would have gotten, you know, less fingers there than I would have, you know, doing this, you know, pseudo promotion. So, um, you know, something like that was, really big for us to help grow that type of audience until the audience found out that, Hey, you can, should follow that vehicle everywhere they go. We had, you know, janitors getting followed home <laughs> at a little, you know, testy. And then at that time, human resources came in and said, eh, you should stop doing that for the safety out of people. So that was probably, you know, probably one of the more extreme things I could think of off the top of my head. <laughs> So it wasn't dropping turkeys from a helicopter. No, that was another promotion that got, you know, <laughs> ixnayed <laughs> by the wayside. Apparently it's already been done before, I think. Yeah. Some guy named Lester, yeah. Nestor, yeah. Lester Nesman, something like that. How about for you, Brady? What was what was the extreme? You know, for the, for our market too. And again, keep in mind we were a news for a good for half of my career at KFKA, we were more of a news political station. So it was a lot more buttoned down type of thing as we've kind of transitioned to the sports side. I mean, we do the, you know, the March madness, listen to, you know, during this hour register right now to get in the March madness challenge for your chance to win 
500 bucks or what that kind of stuff. So I don't know if they're extreme. I will say the most successful, and this was both for the advertiser and listener engagement. We set up an all day remote at a bike, like a bicycle shop. And we were given away like a thousand dollar bike. It was a, it was a nice bike, but it was, we were, all of our shows were out there doing their shows remote from that place. And it was actually after we had, we'd been to a, uh, a radio seminar, like in Chicago, just trying to fix all of our guns on a promotion to see what would work. So we would do, Hey, 10 o'clock hour, stop, stop by within the next 15 minutes. The first five people that get here, um, you register for your chance to win the thousand dollar bike. Um, and that was huge. I mean, we, that was one of those events where, I mean, Scott probably knows this. I mean, remotes, I, I don't like to sell remotes. I don't know that a lot of hosts like to do remotes because you never know what the turnout's going to ultimately be. That was the most successful remote broadcast day that we've ever had. I mean, we had hundreds and within, you know, a few hours throughout the day, just coming by, um, to register for that, for the bike. So that was a big deal for us. As far as extremes, we've done a, Christmas campaigns and things like that, where, you know, we have the 12 stores of Christmas. We did that where we've got to go this time. As Scott kind of mentioned, people are going around the community and registering within this hour to, uh, to, to, to be entered for that prize or something. So is for us, we, I wouldn't say they're like a lot of extreme things, but um, certainly out of the box kind of thinking just to get people in the door for a day. Uh, but the bike shop place was, was probably the most successful one we've ever done. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, and you didn't have to resort to turkeys either. So we did go in for turkeys, though. I don't know, but with, we just ended up. You know what? It was like we we work with a food bank, and they're like, we could set up and do bowling for turkeys in the warehouse, or we could just get a bowling alley to, to <laughs> bowl there. And we thought, let's let's do that. Let's let's just go at a bowling. We did that last year, and that was awesome. So, yeah, I mean, but I'm not opposed to that kind of thing. I think we need to do more of it. Yeah, and I I would presume that that bike shop was very appreciative of the the thousand people that you probably pulled in it really yeah and i mean that turned us in a, a client for life at that point wow. so um learning kind of different ways we that was when this was years ago that was when social media not when it was first coming out but when radio hosts were really going oh i have to make that a part of my that's a part of me now mm -hmm. and trying to get hosts to buy in on that was tough because they just wanted so when i started it was just turn the mic on let me do my thing and let me go home <laughs> Now it's like, no, you need to be doing poll questions. You need to be engaging. Um, talk about that Russell Wilson trade to the Broncos. You need to get into it on social media too. So that was one where we said, let's fix all of our guns on this promotion. Social media, radio ads, get the hosts out, networking, um, and all that. So we saw that and we're like, it works. So that's when we were able to basically tell our hosts, if you're not into the social media thing, um, you might have a hard time excelling in this business so if anything it kind of it kind of cemented a few things as far as what you have to do to be a successful host outside of just being a good talker yeah i think it also comes down to and i've told ken this many many times one of our big mantras is what's in it for me not me as the dj what's in it for me as a listener <clears throat> to go out and sign up for that bike apparently it was a thousand dollar bike uh, we've done things before uh, where we do uh, free concerts for up and coming artists. Ken was up here for one of the shows with a band called Boba Flex. And uh, the only way for people to get those tickets is you have to join us on location. So that was the big way for people to come out to the client's locations. I even had um, one of our clients. It's like a uh, uh, kind of like a sports type of shop, you know, mountain bikes and uh, wakeboarding gear during the summertime, wintertime, doing a lot of skiing, snowboarding stuff. Uh, people would actually call that store asking when the radio station was going to be out there next wow. to get tickets for an up and coming band called Greta Van Fleet. We had them play in our venue uh, before they really took off. And it was kind of, you know, uh, kind of interesting getting that phone call from the owner of the place going, we have people calling us asking for you to come out here. So that that's huge. I mean, that totally answers the what's in it for me type of question. Whenever you can put anything together to answer that question for the listener and then get a client involved, you know, it's going to be a win, win, win situation all the way around. No doubt. Undoubtedly. Well, and I, I shared some of this information uh, with you prior to this. So none of this is a surprise. Um, uh, Scott and I have talked many times about, you know, 
the I, I think radio's been dying since uh, what uh, 1939 when TV first came out, <laughs> something like that. Um, but you know, uh, we we decided to run a few quick questions through a national poll. Um, it's called Question Pro Instant Answers. It's a tool you can get up to 300 nationally representative responses in a single question in up in as little as an hour, which is great. Um, if you want to learn more about that, contact Tim Cornelius here at uh, Question Pro. But uh, they, these are really cool because I love being able to throw out just this quick question and just say, you know, hey, I, <laughs> it's great to work for a company where I can just get a question answered like instantly like this. And so I threw, threw the first one out and it says, you know, how often do you listen to radio? And I excluded streaming. Um, and the great news is that nine out of 10 um, still listen to radio with about half listening throughout the day. I mean, so uh, so much for radio is dead kind of thing. And I think the other, uh, the second one that I threw out there, I was, I was curious because, you know, there's the different formats. And what are the two most popular formats? Well, good for our guests here. It's music and sports. So um, this is this is what people want. And I think radio gives it. This is the one that I thought was interesting as we're talking about ratings and engagement and loyalty and um, all of that is, Really, you know, <laughs> we asked the population how many have filled out a ratings diary, and it's fewer than one in four. And like you were saying, Brady, like 2% probably in Weld County. Yeah. Um, in fact, one out of six don't even know what, <laughs> what, what it is, and half have never been asked per, to participate. So when you get down to that local level, it's just, there's just so few respondents that could just... Uh, I remember working um, with some election polling a few years ago with a former company of mine, and... Um, we we had a little nuance um, with a voter who said they were going to vote one way in a poll that just didn't match uh, the trends and statistics. And so they threw them out of the poll, basically. Wow. So, I mean, does that mean you're tracking wrong? And turns out if they had kept them in, they would have probably had the most accurate polling uh, in that election cycle. So, um, you know, when you throw ratings out the door and, and, and Brady, you have, I mean, you know, what, what's the measurement that you can go back and say to someone, this is how we're doing. Yeah. It's, you know, it, it's really tough to do that. I mean, you know, Ken, you said, you said it perfect. One guy threw off that entire and, you know, uh, that entire system of yours. Yeah. Um, I want to say in our market, uh, I believe the in tab, you know, if it's, you know, uh, if we get 600 people in a month, that's great. But 600 people in the town of a quarter million, I mean, you're the numbers guy. What was that come out to? Less than a half a percent? So we're depending on that amount of people to tell an entire area of how many people are really listening or how much they're enjoying your radio station, time spent listening, and your cum. All for $5. Right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, well, for five dollars, um, you know, at least now with the technology getting a little bit better, we're able to track them a little bit more on the streaming side of stuff. More, sure. not so much the terrestrial. Mm-hmm. Now, when we have systems in place like our, uh, we have a VIP program, and you know, we're able to, you know, ask the listeners seven times a day, "Hey, are you listening?" And then they respond back, and you know, sometimes those numbers are totally different. Uh, if, if we use the same equation that. Uh, Arbitron slash Nielsen uses uh, the information is very skewed, but that's just the technology that they are set in right now. And again, I'll go back to it. If we could ever, you know, get better technology, I don't know, have your cell phone listen, but I'm not sure if, uh, you know, that would be too hip for people nowadays, (laughs) not wanting to have the man listen to them. Um, That would be a great route, but that's why I don't work for Nielsen. I have worked for a local media. Well, well I think in Scott, it's interesting too, you know, talking about, and I know some people hear it and it sounds, it sounds strange, but you, you do, we do kind of do our, our own investigating as far as you just said, the streaming um, we, you, we podcast everything now. So as soon as our sports shows are done or, or game broadcasts, it's immediately available for people to listen to it. And that's what's the beauty of that. We don't have to pay $25,000 to see how many people are downloading our podcasts or going to our website. And the cool thing for us is we get to look directly at that number every day and go, that's down. What do we need to do to get that up? Are we not sharing it enough? Or is the show not good enough? Are we not marketing enough? Um, 
So as opposed to just getting this 25,000, paying 25,000 for us a year to get based off of, oh, some guy wrote KFKA down. Great. What exactly is he listening to? Does he like the preps games that we've aired? Does he like the the shows? No, we get to directly look and go, wow, you know, the the whole show is is needs to pick it up. We the, the downloads have been terrible. We need to ramp that up. What are we doing here? So um, some people hear that and they go, oh, you're just coming up with your own numbers. It's like I can turn my computer around and show you that the 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 the, the rating side of it. I I can't show you exactly what they're doing and how they're doing it, but I can show you exactly on our end what's working and what's not working. And, and so I think the, in this day and age, we are forced to get extremely creative. And I hate to use the word, we find our own rating system, but we're kind of forced to do that sometimes. Yep. Hey, it's, sort, right. it's sort of like that in my industry anyway. I mean, we've we've taken KPI measures like NPS and stuff. And I mean, it, then it becomes all about the score. You know, the incentives are based on it and then you try and game it. And then, you know, like it's very similar in the media business. I mean, you could, you could create your own score and then uh, tune it. But um, I think you realize that obviously, um, you know, you're going to know in your heart of hearts if it's a highly rated program or not. Right. Right. I mean, Brady, you could get like how many calls people are calling in that kind of thing. Oh, and, and you know, we do, uh, I do a daily poll question and that right there, I can tell you what my audience cares about. I can ask a Rockies question today and, other than doom and gloom, they're not going to vote. They're not, it's not, I mean, you'll get votes, you'll get people engaged. But if I say, you know, what was your favorite handoff yesterday at minicamp for Russell Wilson? People are freaking out because it's Russell Wilson. <laughs> so you get to see like, um, I know for me, like Colorado State and Fort Collins, their basketball team made it to, to the big dance this year, played Michigan. That drove my poll question for a long time. CSU basketball did, you know, and then I'll do another one about, do you think the, you know, an avalanche question, for example, and then right there you get to see, wow, in our market, the people that care about Colorado State basketball versus the people that care about, at least on our show, uh, the avalanche. OK, great. Now my brain's going to I need to talk more Colorado State. <laughs> I need to do more <laughs> Colorado State stuff and then I'll slowly work in the abs type of thing. And that doesn't mean you ignore it. It just means you're doing your own self rating system that also makes a better program for everybody because my audience cares about this. So I'm going to do more work into that area as opposed to, oh, you're not really into this. So I'm going to kind of put that on the back burner unless it's really big news. So Ken, I, I think that's a great point. I think us doing our own deep research on our own only helps the listeners. Yeah. And and ultimately, if, you're, if your sponsors are buying that number, then you're doing your job. Yeah, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. Actually, I got to know the what was the answer to that poll question? Uh, uh, was it Russell Wilson's favorite handoff? Yeah. Please tell me it was to a uh, coach Hackett because that, that was hilarious. Was, you got a great young running back in Javante Williams, but nobody cares that he hands the ball off to that guy. It's Nathaniel <laughs> Hackett running around and people just go crazy for that. So, but and again, you go, Oh, that's how can I talk about that for 15 minutes? I'll find a way because. Yeah. You get enough listeners that want to talk about that. It's a unique thing. So I'm sorry. Um, the Denver Broncos quarterback is the real life uh, Ted Lasso. He yes, straight up is. <laughs> exactly. No doubt. <laughs> well, and 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 there's there, there's going to be the the F word in the middle of his name, just like Peyton Manning when he came over. And now it's going to be Russell freaking oh, Wilson to keep no it clean. <laughs> so. I hear that a lot around here, especially from the past <laughs> month. New uh, audiences now. <laughs> words are rearranged a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. I'm still and voting. It's... Not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I was. I was. I, I was telling you. I, I was wearing my uh, Broncos hoodie going from Seattle to Spokane. I got a lot of dirty looks. Yeah. A lot of people saying we're not friends. Just so you know that <laughs> they still have an Alaska Airlines plane that flies around that's still decorated with Russell Wilson wearing Seahawks green and blue. I saw it yesterday. <laughs> Did you see it? Yes. <laughs> yes. I didn't get a probably picture. Probably redo that paint job, just saying. <laughs> yeah, they might want to prioritize that one. So <laughs> uh, on, on your front, Scott, I mean, like when you're when you're thinking about uh, the things that you can talk about and the ways you can engage, obviously, um, I, I one of the things that I've always admired is how much you engage with Facebook mm -hmm. um, with your fans. And it's just I mean, it's it, it pulls. And do you feel that's a successful story for you? It is. Um, I think there is definitely a lot of social media burn 
uh, especially here in the past three years or so. Um, yeah, it's really cool to interact with people via Facebook, but who gets the credit for that? Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Do we get credit for that? Okay, yeah, you get some more likes and shares, but again, do you monetize that? No, it, it's it's really tough to, you know. Um, that's why we've taken to the digital side of stuff. Uh, we just upgraded our texting platform here at the beginning of the year to uh, was it ZipWhip, yeah, to ZipWhip, and we're able to continue on that conversation, much like on how we would be out in general. I can tell you, we respond back to every single person that texts into us. Um, in my show this morning, I think I had a list of, I think it's about 130 people. And we always try to give them a shout out at the end of each day because, you know, uh, Brady, with me and you both being in radio, it's kind of like, okay, we get to hear our voice again. Yeah, we get to hear our name. But even when I put Ken on the air a couple of years ago in Sturgis, I'm sure he's grinning much like he was right now, you know. <laughs> Listeners need that. They need that old school radio. They love hearing their name. They love hearing their voice on the air. Yeah. So that's how we try to interact with them by giving them the time of day. You know, uh, one of our listeners, she lost her husband the other day and, you know, a couple times a day. It's like, hey, you know, many condolences. We have, you know, that such a close bond with our listeners like that, that if you're an outsider, if you're a P2 or a P3, you're kind of checking out this radio station and like, okay, what's going on? And then let's say you participate in a texting promotion. We're doing one today. We're giving away tickets for uh, Henry Rollins and Tenacious D coming to our town. Nice. And, you know, uh, if we see uh, just a random number up there, because we're able to say people's names and, you know, know who they are. It's like, hey, you know, hey, who are you? What are you about? This is our new system, you know. Uh, what's your name? And some of them might be, you know, older listeners. Some of them might be, you know, people that have just, you know, come through the area. You know, there's four or five people I've gotten locked in in the past 10 days. And they now text me every morning on the system. Hey, good morning. Hey, how are you? How are you doing? It's like, oh, I'm great. You know, how was your day yesterday? You know, where it's almost like a virtual online remote where we're not going out to someplace we're still in our studio doing our job but we're still able there to talk to the listeners because those are the ones that this is about you know if we didn't have listeners we wouldn't have ratings so that's where it all starts is to get them involved you know the heyday of radio was you know having people just go bat crap crazy for a radio promotion or a radio remote back in the that day because that was an event nowadays you know brady like you said it's not so you always try to find ways to bring back that old school radio feeling. And we can do that using even something as simple as a texting service and having the, the staff here really focus on them. I think the texting service is, is, is interesting, too, because we started that. And, you know, the play on words with our show, we always, we always kind of say, hey, if you're a listener of my show, you're a hooligan. If you get engaged more, if you're texting, if you're so, doing social media or whatever, we call you a hole of famer. And, and then we start giving them nicknames. So we get texters on a regular basis and we'll say, Hey, if you don't give us your nickname in the next five minutes, we will give you a nickname based off of your last text. <laughs> okay. Um, so, so we get, we get texters that are almost part of the show, you know, and they're like, it's their shtick. It's, you know, we have one guy that's a chiefs fan here and he is, Die hard, hates the Broncos, but he listens every single day. And we call him the arch nemesis of the show. So once in a while, he'll text in. We'll play kind of like some evil villain type music when we get around. Not every time. We don't want to, you know, destroy it. But once in a while, we'll be like, oh, there he is. And then we'll play this music. Um, we'll get one guy, like Clockwork, calls every day, but we only put him on like once every two weeks. And he calls to give his take on the poll question. And then I ask him, what's for lunch? And he's this guy that goes in and he's like, he puts hot sauce on everything and we have music underneath him. And so suddenly you have all these listeners that are like becoming these caricatures within the show. Um, and it also makes him feel like, man, I better keep it up or I'm going to lose my, I'm going to lose my status as a hall of famer here. So we, uh, we get, we go, we do remotes and we'll get people come up and say, which one are you? Are you noob? Are you Dixon? Are you this guy? And then they'll be like, I don't even know what you're talking. Some of them don't know. Cause they're like, I just listen. I'm not one of those one of those guys. So to Scott's point, I mean, that engagement, um, it's almost like they, you see on Facebook, you earn the badges for following a page. This is like, I'm really earning that badge because I'm participating in the show so much to the point where 
they almost value my opinion. They almost value my thoughts. So, and we do. I mean, that's whether I disagree or agree. Um, that's what drives it. Yep. We it's very similar here. I mean, you know, Brady, you get it. I get it. Ken gets it. It's kind of unfortunate that a lot of radio stations nowadays just don't get it. And right. especially in the rock community, it's, you know, rock in its heyday, man. I mean, 80s and 90s. That's what I mean. It was all rock. Now rock's a niche format. You know, we've gone. A, we, we've gone away. You know, now we're just kind of we are the black sheep of the family. And we're sitting there in the corners that, you know, you're getting vittles fed to it every once in a while. Um, you know, you're not a country station, you're not a, a hot AC station. That's where all the money's coming from nowadays. That's where the Arbitron numbers are coming from nowadays. But we might be a small group, but we're a passionate, we're a very loyal group. And we're the type of group leader that will ask them to jump and they'll say how high right. and they'll do it for us. And that's the scary thing about radio nowadays is you see that going away. You see the uh, the mad companies that are coming in and, you know, squeezing down on their stations. You know, I know there's stations now where there is one guy running an entire cluster, not just a station, but an entire cluster. And it's wow. sad. And is that going to change? It's a business model. If it's making yeah. them money, they'll continue on with it. Sure. But it kind of hurts what we try to do, you know, as a, uh, as a format to try to make it bigger and better for the entire country. But we can't, you know, we can't change the world. We can only change our station. One at a time, right? Yep. <laughs> One step at a time. Well, I, I, I know we, we ran a little long here and I, I want to thank you both. I'll, I'll just check with Paulina real quick to see if any questions came in. Uh, we probably answered every question about radio that we've ever had on our minds. Um, so um, one we have here, um, is there a direct correlation with ratings and engagement, especially where revenue is involved? And that's, you know, like we do this all the time with CX. We say, oh, we have this CSAT score, or NPS score, and uh, it, it ties to revenue, though sometimes it's a little tough to tie those in. But do you have that kind of direct correlation that you can show anywhere? I can real quick on one just recently too. Um, we have a we have a, a music event, rodeo event called the Greeley Stampede here. And th when they were looking to make their buys, you know, and they, when they make a buy with us, no matter what. But we hired a guy. Interestingly enough, we hired a former FM guy that was a country music DJ, and so he loves the Stampede. He's all about it. And when they were in, they were deciding whether or not to increase their buy. So when they announced their tickets. Um, they, they went it to all of the social media pages of the people they were going to work with, of the stations with their key hosts. And they looked at our afternoon guy who was very engaged on social media, you know, just the community and they increased their buy to have him and several others outside of our station, but to have him announce who the, the concert venue, what the concert venue was going to be. And we, I was told specifically from their marketing manager that it was because of his engagement. Like in that word, engagement in the community, social media, on air, text line, all the stuff that he does was the reason we want to do this thing. We want to have him be one of the guys that releases this concert uh, venue information. So for me, it is. I mean, you, some marketing managers are looking at social media. Some are looking at, oh, I mean, I've had people say, wow, you're really active. I see you all over the place now. So the rating side, I can't speak on as much. But the engagement side for local businesses that we deal with in the Northern Colorado community, 100%. If you are active, and that's not just social media, as Scott said, that's that's a that's a, a text line and getting out to events and doing remotes and that kind of thing. So I would say yes, there is a direct correlation as far as you know in, engagement um, when, when it comes to our revenue. I, I will absolutely um, uh, mirror what Brady's saying. You know, you know, yeah, you can make money on OnlyFans. Yeah, that's engagement, but you really can't uh, tie that really to ratings. You know, we had something similar to that, a hamburger place uh, newly started here in our area. We did a March Madness type of hamburger bracket. Now you would think, okay, what hamburgers have to do with anything? It doesn't. You know, We just did brackets and March basketball brackets. Since we legally can't say that, I'm sure we would get in trouble for even saying NCAA. Hey, anyways, um, the uh, you know burgers with bacon and peanut butter on them, and we did such a you know I'm not patting ourselves on the back, but we had listeners texting into us saying, "Hey, I just tried that bacon burger with." 
pickles and peanut butter on it. Elvis loves it. And the client loved it. They saw an increase of foot traffic. They saw an increase of revenue and they want to do more and more stuff with us. Now we're starting to see, you know, clients do personal endorsements. I'm doing one for a meat company of all things, doing cooking videos and promoting their, um, you know, it's called Angus Meats Direct. Very, uh, it's like a mail order type of, you know, get steaks and tomahawk steaks and barbecue ribs and everything else. And you cook them all up yourself from a company right here in town. So, you know, yeah, we're, we're seeing, you know, uh, engagement and financial things coming in from our clients. Not really so much ratings, though. Yeah. Yeah. But it really doesn't matter. Ratings are ratings and money's money. I would much rather have money on our books than, <laughs> you know, a really cool rating that, you know, might or might not be sold. I think I think so, most businesses would agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I I didn't see any other questions. I'm I'm looking through the stream here, and oh wait, um, Julia asked, "Do you differentiate between customer loyalty or listener loyalty and creating customer advocates?" Um, uh, let's see, difference between customer loyalty and creating customer advocates. Yeah, because they're not going to be an advocate if they're not loyal. Um, yeah. you have to, you know, mark two of those check box boxes off for them to be a potential diehard P1. Um, yeah, if you're not, uh, you know, you don't have a loyal customer, you don't, you know, have a loyal advocate. So it goes hand in hand. You have to have one before you have the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree too. I mean, we do so many different ticket giveaways and we get people all the time saying, wow, thank you guys so much. I mean, I get messages and this is the best part. We'll do nuggets tickets. And we'll get guys, gals that will text us and say this, I got to take my kiddo to their very first Nuggets game. And you guys made that possible. And then they'll, they, they blow that up. And so they love the fact that they won tickets. Well, now they're, they're tweeting out or commenting or spreading the word about your station. Hey, and I don't care how they find us. Hey, Brady gives away free tickets. I don't care if they tune in for my amazing take about Russell Wilson, or if they tune in to get Nuggets tickets, because the idea is that they'll stick around too. So um, I do think that, yeah, customer loyalty, creating customer adv advocates, we, we're doing those things through, as as as, uh, as Scott mentioned, like we're, we're constantly churning out different promotions and different ideas because as Scott mentioned, it's about the listener. So when we do those things, it does, it does create that, that loyalty to us, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if anything. Good else questions is too. Absolutely. Yeah. That was great. Any others? Um, well, a comment here, gamification is definitely one of the best gratification techniques. And um, I think we all agree with that. It's just, as you said, free tickets. Hey, yeah. You oh, can yeah. win. Scott, you have the um, Mosh Pit All-Stars, they're called. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, I mean, they earn points, continue to earn points, and it's a gamification. And yeah. um, then they get to go. I mean, some of these prizes that you're giving away are amazing, like meet and greets and I mean, not just it's not just limited to concert tickets and oh, you can pick up a, a station towel to wave around or something. Yeah, else. yeah, it's you know the stuff that you know you can't buy. Um, I know that yeah, I've had other friends that uh, would buy VIP tickets or a meet and greet and stuff like that. Well, lot, not a lot of people can do that. But then there's other things that people cannot buy. Like uh, we did uh, go kart racing with five finger death punch, and. You know, at that time, they were just a baby band, but people thought it was the coolest darn thing ever. Go stock car racing with another band called Otherwise, uh, doing just, you know, one off type of things, becoming a roadie for asking Alexandria for a couple of days. You know, that's stuff that you can only get if you are a loyal P1 of our station and you are a part of our VIP program. And if you're not, you're going to miss out on it. So might as well go get signed up for free. And yeah, using the gamification technique is definitely a great way to be doing that to where you can, again, answer the question for listeners. What's in it for me if I participate? Can I get that? Can I get tickets for Aftershock? Can I get uh, Denver Bronco tickets? No, you got to know somebody. I do. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, 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 it all comes back to what's in it for me for the listeners. And if you can't answer that question, you're going to have a tough time, uh, you know, making revenue personally. Yeah, you mean like Ivan Moody wanting to wear my Broncos jersey, my custom Broncos jersey on stage? 
We got pictures of that. And you told him, no, I can't believe that because you know that jersey would have got shredded. Oh, I know that jersey. I would have never seen that jersey again. So. Nope, but it would have been a great story, though. Scott, we need to talk about this otherwise five finger death punch thing, too. I want to get involved in that. So I want, I want to ride go karts with those guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, again, the uh, nice thing you can do with you know, an end up and coming band, but you know, once they get to that upper echelon, it's tough. No more. We had, Gre- we had Greta Van Fleet play for free here for our radio station back in 2018. Wow. They're not doing that anymore yeah. because <laughs> right now they're get them early. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, well, I want to thank you both for joining. I mean, this is probably the most fun I get to have on these kind of discussions is um, these kind. And I, I really appreciate both of you coming on. I, I sort of wish we had recorded our pregame talk because, you know, that was also a lot of fun. Just, uh, riffing on things i think we could have probably gone for a couple of hours just talking you know how the broncos are going to do super bowl all the way do we have unanimous consent on that one well i, I don't see anybody else with <laughs> here, so. you guys are kind of lackluster but you do have your colorado ties so i'll give you that yeah so thank you all really appreciate it and um uh, appreciate you joining me and it was a lot of fun ken Absolutely. thank you thank you So now what?